Oh man, I'm addicted to it too. That's why I'm here each and every Tuesday night. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Off the Fence. Listen, guys, my first guest is a lover of all things communication and arts, well recognized for student and community engagement. Her corporate career began at Cable News Network as a director of international training department and spanned tremendously. An eclectic combination of a private Catholic school, two HBCUs, and a university firmly rooted in psychology. That lets you know why she's going to have this conversation tonight. But her most prized possession and role is mother of two beautiful daughters. And we are having a fireside chat with her right now. Oh my goodness. Welcome, Dr. V. Now we gotta unmute your mic. I had a whole dance going on. Hey, listen, you was in there. <laughs> Can you, you hear me? All kind of trouble this week. I'm so excited. It's what we need to talk about, though. It's what we need to talk about. People are talking about arguing naked, <laughs> saving relationships. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's what we need it's what we need so 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 before we get into that <laughs> tumultuous conversations all right so let's talk about you okay now you have uh now i saw the combination it's an eclectic an eclectic absolutely so that absolutely. means that means what it means that i have um been educated in all over. <laughs> now, <laughs> I've been educated all over, and domestically and internationally. I, and I have been in um, HBCUs. I've been in uh, PWIs. I've been in uh, all different kinds of environments, which gives me kind of like a really good mix of what I'm looking through, of the lens that I'm looking through, because everybody's looking through a lens. But my lens is very diverse because I've seen it from Morehouse Med School. I've seen it from Clark. I've seen it from Argosy. I've seen it from um I've seen it from Taipei. You, you see, my I've seen right. it from Australia. I, I've been in the in you know going from um, Hawaii to Australia singing and talking to people. Right? Okay. That's education. And so I, the eclectic part is because it's been a a lot of different um, places to go. But the solid part is I always engage with the people that are there because people, books, and places that you go change your life. Okay. All right. So we're going to kick the door open. Okay. Because I saw a snippet of something you said, and I definitely wanted to dive in, uh, delve into that question. You talked about no one can outlove a woman. Now, there's a bunch of men looking at you like with the side eye. Let's talk about that for a second. I love it. So here's the deal. Any man that can come right up on the stage right now and deliver a baby, please do that. Because I do I do need him in order to make the process come together. I think that's the greatest gift that you can give a human is a human. Right. Mm. Birth out of love. That's the greatest gift you can give a human. And so that's why it gets all turtled up when people are fighting while people are pregnant. It is, that's what it is. That's the, the problem because you're messing around with the greatest gift ever. So as a woman, when you make me feel secure, mm. right? Because at the, at the hospital, what do they do? They put the lady in the restraints. They, they, they put her in a bed. They, and if, even if she's delivering, um, with a midwife, it's it's a very secure, serene place because uh -huh. once that serenity comes through, you're going to deliver. Now, mm. when I deliver to you, my handsome king, wh whatever you have in your heart, I'm able to help you birth it. Okay. And I'm going to and I'm going to nurture it. But you all I need from you is a little bit of security so I can let the waters part. Get it. So you so so that's what you need when you secure me. I'm going to birth and nurture you. Okay. So yes. when I secure you, you're going to birth and nurture me. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, so 
you made you had a statement just a moment ago in that you said make you feel secure so would you say is it part of a man's responsibility to make a woman feel secure or is that her responsibility yeah um first of all i i know um that it is my responsibility to love myself okay. because i don't i do not believe that it's a 50 50 kind of i don't believe that you need to come 100 percent and 100 percent, and that comes from heart work that comes from shadow work that comes from oh my daddy wasn't there oh my mama didn't do okay you 152 now you need to remedy that so that you can come with a whole package to another whole human right okay so it but it is it is his responsibility um to make sure that the ground is solid around us my ground around me i got that but the ground around us that is his yeah he's supposed to come with a piece of the land check your bible now i ain't no gold digger but i'm just saying he is supposed <laughs> to come with a piece of the land mm -hmm. okay okay so, so so when you when you say he's supposed to check the foundation um we're looking at because you know we have these types of conversations all the time right surrounding men women roles responsibilities and everybody has a, an opinion or a insight on what that should look like but you mentioned love a moment ago and mm -hmm. i, I kind of want to touch on that uh because i think it plays a part in, in, in what i want to say as well so when you when you look at love how would you define or identify what love actually is it's an action word that governs two great listeners and two greater forgivers. Two great listeners and two greater forgivers. Absolutely. It's okay. A, it's an action word. So it it is is that commitment that I will make you accepted in the beloved. I'm your beloved and you are mine. Right? You my beloved. You but boy, don't start it now. All right. <laughs> All right. So it's it's my commitment to you because you're not going to always love V what she did. OK. But to make the commitment of I know I know she wasn't exactly right, but her foundation, her heart says this is what she's made out of. So here's the thing. We before we commit, though. Let me roll back. Before we commit, we have to make an absolute identification whether or not this person is a present and a and a promise or a project. Okay. Okay. Because if the person is a project, you know, that's long, that's short term. That's what you get at school. Get your mm. instructions, do that. Go ahead. So, and the problem is we get projects, things we pour into confused with presents and promises, those things that should come back to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I can, if I can identify you as a present and a promise in my life and you go awry, my commitment should be, let's see how we can fix that. Okay. Now, is, is that why you tell singles that there's no meeting by chance? Oh, I, there's no meeting by chance. Not one bit. So, so let me, let me get this straight now. Cause I got to set the framework. You saying when we meet people, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no happenstance, coincidence. There's no meeting by chance. What would you call that? This is, I, I got to hear this. I got to hear this. It is, it's, it's definitely part of your fabric. And that person is meant to be uh -huh. a present and a promise or a project. The problem is when you get them car fruits. And when you get. <laughs> car fruits? Okay. Carfrews. <laughs> because when when the person when we're meant when that person is supposed to come across our path and we're meant to give insight we're meant to mentor mm -hmm. we're meant to pour into and the person keeps going then that's a project but when we treat it like a present and hold on to it and it wasn't really ours because it's supposed to keep moving Mm -hmm. That's how the fight happens. Oh, that's how the fight happens. Now, and then when you say the fight, elaborate a little bit about the fight. I like you. You don't like me. Yes, you do like me a little bit. Oh, don't, <laughs> baby, don't worry. Don't worry about it. 
He just don't know what he wants. You just have to help him. Let me tell you, just this is a, a, a pause in the, uh, just uh, for, for the ladies. Every man knows what he wants when he sees it and he knows uh, how to stop and get it. So when you get a man and he don't have time for you, that ain't your dude. Oh. It's just not your dude because every every hunter knows how to go after what he wants. Okay. Every hunter. Yeah. So you you're telling the ladies who are listening or watching this uh, worldwide that every man that they meet that is a person of interest, mm -hmm. he knows immediately or in some vicinity of, of a time frame that's short in nature if he wants her or not. He does. Ah. He does. He does. Yeah. I think you're right about that. I, 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 I absolutely know that I'm right because you, you can see, you know, so I'm a, I'm a, um, you can men and black yourself after this. So, so I'm not going to be able to forget it. Hilariously funny. <laughs> so uh, in, in my lifetime, you know, I, I have dated gentlemen that owned the corporation. Right. Mm -hmm. And he had time while he's in in the limo on the way to the meeting to say hey b what's up what you need dear everything okay mm. oh oh your car broke down oh don't hold on hey can you send that car for her you see what i mean mm -hmm. but he ran the corporation so when somebody says to me oh i'm so i'm so uh, i said so i did mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. you like uh-uh that ain't it uh-uh. And, and honestly, and, and I, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I definitely have had two weddings and not one marriage. Um, so I am very aware. I'm aware, right? Because in my even in my lifetime after those um, occasions, after I got those two t-shirts, I still didn't meet a lot of bad Guys, I gotta honestly say, I didn't know that there was a shortage because mm. I always in my lifetime have been approached by very nice gentlemen, and that's the truth. I, I hadn't had a lot of pickle heads. So you, you just said something. You said two weddings, no marriage. Absolutely. Two weddings. We can't we can't leave that right there. We we okay. we we, we we just can't leave that sitting on the table all shiny. And, and no, we, we can't do that. So, so two weddings, so beautiful, both of them. Um, storybook probably could have been patented, the last one, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's gorgeous. Uh, but first time, just my friend, we were the best of friends. We were both about to go off to grad school. And he said, you want to get married? And I said, yeah. And that was it. We were young. We were having fun. That's how it was. Still friends to this day. Uh, um, uh, next young man um, wrote Rougher, um, Domestic Violence, Part of the Fabric. Uh -huh. And and for me, no biblical scholar can absolutely convince me that it, that is not abandonment. It is. And so you, you cannot connect with what you abandon. So, um, so yeah, so I have those, have those t-shirts and have taken those t-shirts to the counselor, ironed them out, refurbished them and got a whole new wardrobe on that. And that's why, that's how the concept, my concept of, um, I really began to study that thing and about loving and, you know, mm. and in understanding the other human and communication be, but first, make sure it's a present and a promise. <laughs> make sure it's a present. So here's a question for you. Okay. Are relationships difficult or are the people in the relationship that make things difficult? Ooh, this is so, so rotten. But I honestly think that they're not because I, I would say that. Um, you think relationships are not difficult? I don't. I think okay. they take. I think they take work and commitment consistently. Mm -hmm. But but when somebody says to you, "Oh man, it's so hard for me to love you," Ooh. that that's a very rough statement. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh. And that and that is not the essence of because love is supposed to be patient, it's supposed to be kind, it's supposed to be of good report, it's supposed to be so when these things inherently uh, uh-huh. become oxymoronish, uh-huh. <laughs> it's time to look at the uh, the concepts. So n- no, I don't think it's absolutely difficult. I think we just got to find a right match and then decide to work hard. To okay. work. When, and when I say hard, I'm not talking about against each other. I'm saying with each other. Baby, let's be intentional. Alongside of each other. Yeah, alongside, yeah. shoulder to shoulder. There you go. Got you. Got you. All right. So let's talk about naked arguments because people want to know about this. <laughs> <laughs> Your thing is relationships will last a lot longer if people learn how to argue naked. You have to explain that to my audience. Okay, so so let me give you a little bit of backstory. We we said that um, that we um, domestic violence was part of my fabric, and in my healing, we were we were joking around. It was like a bunch of girls one day, and I said, "You know what? Next guy, I, when I, when I get married, he is going to be um, six seven and one hundred and thirty five pounds. So just in case something happens, I can blow him over like the wind, right? And <laughs> You know, so and then I thought about it. I was like, no, because it's not like the kind of dude I like. So God, stop playing because I don't I don't believe in God to send you what you need, not what you want. I think because he created me, he does know what I want and he'll send that as well. So that's a whole nother. Okay. But anyway, but anyway, um, but I did think I said, but I don't never, ever uh, want to just argue with my husband and and i have been in a relationship my, like my college sweetheart we didn't argue we were just good friends we loved each other it was great so so i just decided i said you know what when i get married for real let him just look like he about to argue i'm gonna start taking it off at the door whatever it is i'm stripping it and let's just go on and go on upstairs honey and let's talk this thing through because i don't think it's gonna take a long time to get these arguments over with if it's just me and you. And and I played around with that idea and played around with that idea and then decided God gave me the vision of being a family doctor, but for meaning that I would counsel you. Mm-hmm. I would. I, so I got I'm a licensed minister to marry you. And then I would be with you two or three times a year. And then when you have your kids, you guys come over so that just like you do your physical body, you would do your mental, your heart body. OK. And in, in that um, that whole concept, that's how we came up with the, the naked news is the vulnerability of the message delivered. Right. So when you physically strip Mm-hmm. Then those practices that come along with you mentally stripping and becoming vulnerable, they become second nature. You okay. can't really be so mad if I'm this cute and then you just come on. Cause what else, baby? What else is it? You're gonna you I, I feel like you I always felt like that it would work that you would begin to focus because the problem is focusing on the challenge. Mm instead of the other person right 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 so if i can focus on the challenge so so when you start to talk about nakedness and vulnerability when you talk about as humans we have an absolute need to to thrive through touch through connection because babies that you don't touch they do what finch they 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 die they die no in in hospital like if you look in i mean reports, 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 the failure to thrive syndrome. That's what it's called. If you don't pick up a baby, cuddle it, that baby can actually die. It's called failure to thrive. All right. So that vulnerability, our need to connect and that um, absolute understanding that um, the other person is accepting of us. Mm -hmm. That's when, that's where naked news came for me. The impact because the concept of fighting fair. Have you ever heard of that concept? Fighting. Right. So the concept of fighting fair, when you look at all the studies, it's like it's it's a million models of fighting fair, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of have to temper it to you as a couple. Um, but all of those studies 
say that they push um, couples that fight fair ahead of the game in the percentage of staying together. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So so you talking, not just you talked about getting naked downstairs and getting upstairs. We ain't making it upstairs. Okay. We ain't making it upstairs. I, I, why do, if we naked in, in the hallway, in, in the foyer, <laughs> why we got to go upstairs? Well, we, okay, to each his own. I'm not, I'm not going to sanction anybody. That's your home. But, <laughs> or, or, your, or your backyard or your car, whatever. Uh, but the, the point is the vulnerability that you bring. See, when you're taking off stuff, Right. It reminds you to take off stuff. It really is a powerful concept. And and so then when I married my first couple, I was able to talk about that. And okay. then all during the, the um, last couple of years, I've been talking to couples about it. And please try it. Tell me, try it. And so one lady I was talking to one day, she was like, you know, well, I just think that's just she just flat out. She was like, well, I just think that's stupid. And I think you're um, sexual. You're um, I, objectifying women and I and I and I and I did remind her that the man was going to be naked too but the thing I really <laughs> reminded her of was how was it going the way she had been doing it that part how, how's it going how's it going baby and so you you if if this will will because we can't say Christian marriages are better they they 70 I think 70 percent of them crash out Right. We can't say this kind of marriage is better, that kind of marriage. It's something wrong in our communication practices. And sex is something that we don't talk about. You know, even even as Christian women, I would be, you know, you, 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 it's something we need to talk about. And I don't understand why every day we get up, we eat breakfast, we feed our bodies, but we're going to send our significant other out hungry. With a oh. Don't, don't don't send Stop. Me. malnutrition. Don't, don't send me out hungry. Don't run amok. Let Feeding, us straight. Prayer and passion. I believe they go together. Do it every morning. Well, listen, we're going to continue this conversation in the clubhouse right after this show. I, I mean, listen, this is a great conversation. I think so many people need to be privy to this because they don't know how to get through the rough patches, and I think that's a great antidote. Arguing while naked strips you not only of your outer shell, but also of your inner shell, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, Dr. V, if people want to connect with you, how can they do so? Um, at DreamKeeper, uh, D-R-E-A-M-K-E-Y-P-E-R uh, on IG, and um, uh, yeah, ValenciaDream7 at gmail.com. Uh, there you go, the Dr. V. I'm waiting for you. Oh, and listen, they can collect connect with Kaleidoscope Love. I forgot. Yeah, talk about the, that right quick. The poetry book. Okay, so poetry book, Kaleidoscope Love on Amazon already. Beautiful, beautiful poems. They will help you get naked. I'm telling uh -oh. you. Yeah, they'll help you get naked. So, so call me if you need a a, a, a private poetry reading. <laughs> y'all, y'all need a little bit. Okay, really, it's it's a great book and it's a great book just for love. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Y'all check out Doctor V. Thank you so much for being on the show. We're gonna see you in the clubhouse at seven p.m. Uh, Pacific time, ten p.m. Eastern time. All we'll right. see you. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, when we come back, we have the orgasmic whisperer is here. Oh, this is going to be a conversation. We're talking about the power of uh, arousals and touchless orgasms. Don't go anywhere. It's off the fence. I'm Finch. We'll be right back. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Now. Like I have the radio on the telly.